Hey guys, I figured it was about time for another One Album Bands video. And this time, it's an all-American edition. So here are five American 80s metal bands with only one album that still kicks ass today. First up, Gargoyle. Gargoyle was formed in 1982 in Portland, Oregon by guitarist Kevin Sanders and drummer David Kendall. They'd be joined a couple years later by bassist Doug Smith. This lineup put together a three-track demo in 1985 with David on vocals. After a couple of years looking for a permanent singer, they'd finally find Tim Lockman, who impressed the band with his expressive vocals. In 1987, Gargoyle would sign with New Renaissance Records and re-record the track Into the Darkness from their demo with Tim for the Metal Blade Records compilation Metal Massacre 8. They'd finally release their self-titled album in 1988. Gargoyle goes for a very traditional sound, but with some U.S. power metal and speed metal mixed in. Children, gather around the burning fire. There's also a lot of classical influence in the guitar solos. My personal favorite track is Out From The Shadows. There is structure to Gargoyle's music, but there's also a sort of a DIY rawness to it that I personally like. And part of what I like about the album is that it kind of sounds like they're playing in a dungeon. There's a reverb on Tim's vocals that adds just the right amount of atmosphere. With these final words I speak, the meaning not so clear. Is my question vain or will you buy? Unfortunately, as far as the American music industry was concerned, Gargoyle was perhaps too melodic to be speed metal and too fast for mainstream metal but I think they put out a great album, and I encourage you to check out the Deluxe Major Metal Edition, released in 2020, with demos and a bunch of bonus material included. Number two, Assassin. Assassin was formed in 1981 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, by members of bands who'd already been playing in the area. With the original lineup, bassist Rick Dar, drummer Rick Schnupp, guitarists Billy Toth and Chris Zimmerman, along with vocalist Mark Bailey, they'd name the band Assassin. By 1983, they'd already be opening for huge bands like Quiet Riot, and they'd play a Born to be Wild cover as an encore for every show they opened, except for Steppenwolf, understandably. Yeah. 
It also put out a 7-inch single in 1983 featuring a song Billy had written in a previous band, Fools Don't Know. Fools don't know. In 1984, Schnupp and Zimmerman would leave Assassin, and by 1985, drummer Jeff Koffer and keyboard player Larry Donovan would join up to record Assassin's full-length album, License to Kill. Assassin has a gritty rawness to their sound with hookier riffs than you might expect. And Mark Bailey's vocals are a great fit. He hits all the high notes, but he also has a cool spoken delivery sometimes too. I got news for you. It's gonna stop. You wanna know why? Before this night ends, I'm gonna watch you die. All of the tracks on License to Kill have a Steel City attitude with other touches as well. I get some Thin Lizzy vibes at points and some Southern rock in Billy's guitar solos. By 1988, with mainstream metal moving more towards thrash and poppier stuff, the guys in Assassin moved on to other projects. Unfortunately, Billy Toth passed away in 2015. Assassin's other two songwriters are still playing. Mark Bailey sings in a Rush tribute band called Sawyer, and Rick Dar still does session work laying down metal bass lines. And License to Kill is a punchy, energetic album definitely worth checking out. There's also a reissue of this one available from Heaven and Hell Records on both CD and vinyl. Number 3. Cities Cities was formed in 1981 in New York City with Steve Maranovich on lead guitar, John Rubino on drums, Sal Italiano, a.k.a. Sal Main, on bass, and vocalist Ronnie Angel, who'd started out both singing and playing rhythm guitar, but eventually decided to focus entirely on vocals in fronting the band. John Rubino would leave not long after the band was formed and be replaced by A.J. Perro, who then got invited to join Twisted Sister, who he'd sent an audition tape to just before joining Cities. And look, you can't turn down D. Snyder. They'd almost lose Steve, too, when Cities auditioned for Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley of Kiss, later finding out that it was actually an audition to replace their guitarist, Ace Freely. Kiss wanted Steve, but Cities' manager at the time kept this information to himself, since Cities seemed to be growing an audience of their own. Greg D'Angelo, an early drummer of Anthrax, joined Cities around 1983 and would appear with them on the compilation album New York Metal 84 for the track Still of the Night. Still of the The 
track got the attention of Concrete Management, and City signed to a one-record deal with overseas record label Metal Masters. Greg, however, would leave to join White Lion, and John Angel would be credited on drums for City's six-track EP, Annihilation Absolute, in 1985. While touring and opening for bands like Manowar, Riot, and Overkill, with Scott Du Bois on drums, Cities would get offers from both Megaforce Records and Metal Blade. They'd end up going with Metal Blade to record their full-length album, which shared the same title as their EP. AJ would return just in time for the album, which contained all six re-recorded tracks from the EP, plus three additional songs, including my favorite track, Cruel Sea. Ronnie has outstanding power metal vocals with an impressive range, and Steve's awesome solos have a unique tonal quality. I swear sometimes it sounds like he's wailing on a violin. Honestly, it's no wonder Kiss wanted to snatch him up. Unfortunately, the album didn't get much in the way of label support, and confusion over the similar cover art for the EP and full-length album probably didn't help either. Cities would break up around 1990 with everyone moving on to other projects. Sal Italiano would play with Anvil for a few years, and AJ and Ron would start a band together called Father Time. Ultimately, AJ would return to playing with Twisted Sister until his untimely passing in 2015. Ronnie still continues his passion for writing and recording music to this day. But Annihilation Absolute is a badass album with powerful melodies and Euro-style vibes, especially in the guitar work. You can check it out at the link in the description. Number 4, Black Death. Black Death was formed in Cleveland, Ohio, in or around 1977. There are conflicting stories about the band's formation, but essentially it seems like the original lineup was Greg Hicks on guitar, Phil Bullard on drums, Claiborne Pinkins on bass, and Sicky Spacek on vocals and guitar. Unfortunately, in March of 1979, not long after the band settled on the name Black Death, Claiborne was shot and killed. He would eventually be replaced by Daryl Harris. As the earliest known all-black heavy metal band, Black Death were definitely an anomaly in the Cleveland rock scene. However, they were welcomed into the community by other local metal bands like Destructor. Sicky said, being an all-dark American heavy metal band was not a preconceived idea by any of us. It was something that just happened to turn out that way. To us, and especially to me, we were a heavy metal band, period. A coloring book is a coloring book no matter what different colors are used inside of them. And the band definitely seemed to have a specific sound in mind that they were going for. A good friend of mine, he had the Black Sabbath Master Reality album. And when I heard that first chord, on that album, I said, this is what I'm hearing in my head. This is what I'm trying to describe to y'all. Yeah. With two tracks appearing on the 1983 compilation album, Cleveland Metal, 
Black Death would get a record deal with Auburn Records, the same label Destructor was on, and on Halloween of 1984, they'd release their self-titled album. This album is super heavy, especially for the time, with a kind of proto-punk attitude and a ton of character. And a lot of that character is supplied by lead singer Sicky Spacek, who's a freaking madman. I am the angel from heaven. I will make you scream. I am the angel from heaven. I will make you scream. The bulk of the album has a Manila Road or Judas Priest power banger style, but there are also a couple of slower tracks too, like the excellent When Tears Run Red. Aside from the main LP, Black Death also came with a 7-inch single featuring two additional tracks. Black Death would break up by 1988 due to some internal issues that are apparently still ongoing. After Phil Bullard passed in 2008, Greg Hicks created a new version of Black Death, and in 2010, Sicky Spacek created his own version, Black Death Resurrected. It's a shame they split, but Black Death remains a piece of metal history, and I'd highly recommend their single self-titled album to anyone that likes their music heavy and loud. Number 5, Commander. Commander was formed in 1985 in Los Angeles, California, with Dave Macias on guitars, Richard Mejia on bass, Ron Avila on drums, and John Nadish on vocals. I wasn't able to find out much about this band, except that they had a track on Metal Massacre 7 in 1986 and put out one album, The High and Mighty, in 1987. I could probably spend the rest of the video talking about how great the opening track, Knights of the Round Table, is. That chorus is badass, and the guitar solo just fits perfectly. It also has one of my personal favorite metal tricks to make a song extra epic. You just sing the third chorus one octave higher. Someone named Mark Benson is credited on keyboards, and they're used really effectively on this album to provide extra atmosphere to an already pretty great record. Alone in the darkness, he decides his plan of strife. John Nadish has a great vocal range, and just like Commander's music, he has elements of Halloween and Judas Priest. Plus, he nails the vocals on the Dio era rainbow cover, Kill the King. But 
but I guess 1987 was getting a little late for this sort of style, and Commander wouldn't release anything else, which is a shame because The High and Mighty is such a great album. There isn't much info on the band members after this either, although it appears that John Nadish passed away in 2012, and Dave Messias is currently playing with a band called Joe the Boss. I would have loved to hear more from Commander, and also Gargoyle, Assassin, Cities, and Black Death. Check them out for yourself, and let me know what you think. Also, if you have a band that didn't make it on here, I will be doing more of these, so be sure to leave it in the comments. Anyway, I hope you dig these bands and these albums as much as I do. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.